Hello, good morning. I hope that everybody is well and that you've had a good week. Um, I've had so many inquiries asking how Ray is um, and I'm very pleased to report that this week was um, a turning point for Ray. It was a lot for him to come to terms with and he has now sort of mentally processed it all um, and is well, he's just found his sense of humour, his zest for life and um, looking forward to being better and being able to start to play golf again. I think the Ryder Cup has had something to do with that. Um, we will know more on October the 6th when he has scans and sees his consultant. The concern with Ray is that he has an underlying an underlying condition that may prevent his bones from healing where they were broken. But we're not going to cross that bridge unless we have to. Um, we're thinking positive. And the other thing we're thinking of now is about travel. You know, now that um, it's been announced that the US border is opening November this year, not November next year, which had been previously reported in our papers, you know, our sort of um, world has opened back up. Um, I have actually booked flights to come over to the US in March where I'm going to meet up with some friends um, for um, a week of um, companionship. We're going to have some adventures um, and I'm working on some other trips as well. So um, USA, here I come in 2022. But that is providing the US recognises the AstraZeneca vaccination, which is what I've had. Um, if they don't, well, we'll have to see what we can sort out about um, getting revaccinated. Now, um, this week is a very, very special week for Hands Across the Sea Samplers. It's a milestone in our uh, history of hats. Um, we welcomed Lisa Brown as the third reproductionist of our team. Um, and Lisa um, has reproduced her first sampler and Mary Goodwin was released this week. Isn't she a beautiful sampler? She really, really is. This mulberry tree, I've never seen a motif quite like that before. And you know, a mulberry tree is so apt for a sampler stitched in silk. And we had great fun researching the history of mulberry trees um, in the United Kingdom. And we write about that in Mary's book. This little girl, she really loved pink. So, so pretty. Such a girly sampler. Um, now, Lisa um, wrote um, a sort of letter almost to uh, needleworkers that has been published in her booklet. And I want to read it to you because I think it's very beautiful what Lisa has written. Hello Stitchers, my name is Lisa and I have been model stitching for hats since 2017. In late 2016, Nicola told me she had an exquisite pair of samplers stitched by two sisters and asked if I would like to stitch one of them for her. I was intrigued and said yes right away. That sampler was the stunner Anne Tong Uffendale. I had only ever stitched for my own pleasure, so this was a new experience for me. I did not want my stitching to ever feel like work or an obligation, so I was a bit nervous, but knowing I was the first person to stitch and bring one of these little girls back to life was so exciting. Model stitching was an eye-opening glimpse into some of the behind-the-scenes work of releasing a pattern to the needlework community. Fast forward to the fall of 2020, right before our second lockdown for COVID began, and Nicola approached me with a new challenge. She presented me with the opportunity to work a sampler from start to finish, charting and stitching. I had only ever charted one sampler, and that was for fun for a friend. I hesitantly said yes, 
wondering if I could do the girl justice or live up to Nicola's expectations. Nicola sent a photo of the sampler and I was captivated and eager to start. When the actual sampler arrived at my house, she was even more beautiful than any photo could capture. I was pinching myself as I held this 222 year old sampler in my hands. Now was the time to get busy and get to work. I approached the task in two parts. The first job was to chart the actual stitches, a very analytical process of counting, studying and counting again. I likened it to putting a jigsaw puzzle together, making sure everything fit in its proper place. The next phase was the more artistic challenge, selecting the colours. So much of what has appealed to me about stitching revolves around colour. I love to study the play of colours with one another and with the fabric, the nuance of a particular shade or colour. This was so much harder than I expected. I laid out colours, studied them, looked at them in different light. I found myself agonising over my choices and second guessing myself. This was by far much harder than the actual graphing of the stitches. I eventually finalised my selections and got busy. Mary Goodwin was only eight years old when she stitched her sampler in 1798. My impression is that she was a truly girly girl. She used every shade of pink imaginable, along with pretty pastel shades throughout her work. She did a beautiful job for such a young age, and in areas where she would make a small error, she seemed to learn very quickly and correct herself as she continued. The biggest struggle she had was trying to maintain a straight line across the rows of her verse. She was not the most successful in that area, but I think she tried hard. Overall, she did a very good job with her stitches for such a young age. This has been an immensely rewarding process and I am filled with gratitude for the opportunity. I am happy to say this has never felt like work and has only deepened my appreciation and love of samplers. I have poured my heart into making Mary a true, faithful reproduction. I hope you love her as I do and spend many pleasurable hours with your needle recreating her beautiful sampler. Isn't that, you know, her Lisa's words are so heartfelt and so beautiful. I just had to include them in this video. Um, Lisa, you more than lived up to our expectations. You know, it's a masterpiece and we take our hats off to you and we can't wait to showcase your next reproduction sampler. Now um, Mary stitched her sampler with 20 colours and um, Lisa stitched her model with Auvera Soir Soir d'Alger. Um, in the booklet we provided conversions for Soir 103 and DMC and we have broken down the um, thread legend so that we show various number of strands on different counts of linen. We're trying to give you the most comprehensive thread legend that we can. Um, the design area of the sampler is 290 by 308 stitches. Um, Lisa stitched her model on fibre on a whim to the shade of light dunes and this linen is so beautiful. I can't wait that when I go to the States next that I can stock up on fibre on a whim linen. Really impressed with this um, dye lot of this particular swatch of linen. Um, now if you stitch the sampler on 28 count um, she would be 20.71 stitches by 22. If you stitched it on 36 count linen, she would be 16.11 by 17.11. On 46 count linen, which was what Lisa stitched her on, um, she would be 12.61 by 13.39. Um, she stitched with cross stitch over two threads and the verse and the date are in cross stitch over one. Um, 
we're focusing on Lisa's achievement here, but as Lisa said in her words to you, it was a really wonderful achievement for Mary to stitch this sampler at just eight years of age. You know, she probably started this sampler when she was seven, you know, possibly even six. These girls, you know, they didn't sit down and sort of stitch them up in a matter of weeks. You know, this would have been a, a, a process as part of their uh, curriculum in school. Very, very pretty. And we hope that you enjoy her. Um, her booklet and PDF are available on the Hands Across the Sea Samplers website. But her booklet is available from needlework stores throughout the world. Um, and, you know, we hope that um, you love Mary as much as we do and that you welcome another reproductionist uh, to uh, the needlework world. Reproducing samplers is very much a labour of love. You know, it's not um, something you just dash off. You put a lot of long hours into doing this. So, you know, it's just really wonderful to have somebody uh, with Lisa's passion and her eye for colour, um, you know, start reproducing samplers for us all to enjoy. Um, you know, and I hope that you, um, you know, let Lisa know how much, you know, you think of Mary when you stitch her. Um, I know that Lisa's so excited to see Mary being stitched by her needlework uh, sisters and brothers. Um, yeah, right, okay. Um, my stitching. Oh. I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment, but um, I seem to have made um, some mistakes on my current model. And the model I've just finished, um, Mary Ann Priest, I had um, laced her and I took her to the framers. And when I was in the framers, I looked at her and I noticed that I had forgotten something. And um, I posted a picture of her sampler on social media and I asked you if you could see what was wrong with her sampler. Um, I edited the post to point out that it wasn't an error in the stitching, it was an omission. Um, and only one person that I, can, that I saw actually spotted what I had missed off the sampler. Um, and it was these two uh, blue uh, berries or fruits in these baskets. Um, but what I've really liked is that so many of you spotted anomalies in Mary Ann's sampler. And yes, the date is not um, on a, um, a, la a parallel or a straight line. She's dropped her date on the second half. Um, she has um, stitched um, a lowercase q, not an uppercase q. Um, the top of her carnation has slid out of line. But all of these things are how Mary Ann stitched her sampler. And I was so pleased that people took the time to study this photograph looking for my omission. And in doing so, they noticed all the little errors that Mary Ann had made. But Mary Ann wasn't bothered. She didn't unpick them and restitch them. And you know, it's a lesson maybe to all of us that when we are stitching our samplers, you know, we don't have to be so hard on ourselves. The little girls weren't hard on themselves. You know, you often see things squished in and um, fudged. And, um, you know, most borders that these little girls stitched, um, when they got round them, they realised that they had done their maths wrong and they had to sort of squish the borders together. Um, and, you know, Mary does have some odd little borders. Not one corner meets up um, correctly. Like if she had got her maths right, she could have had a border that flowed all the way around, but she didn't. I think it's all these little anomalies that endear these samplers to me. Now, talking about borders meeting up, I want to show you something. This is my new model, and it is terribly, terribly sweet. 
Um, and you might say, why are you stitching this in this way? Like I'm all over the place with this sampler. Well, I started off um, stitching the border. I started here and I dropped down, then I worked around. When I got to here, I'm one stitch out. Um, and I'm one stitch out on the um, horizontal, not the vertical. I'm a stitch short somewhere. Now, I have gone around and around and around counting this border and I cannot find my mistake at all. So I just, I just don't understand it. It has been a real puzzle. So what I have done, rather than uh, put all the um, dressing on the vine, I have decided to stitch the sampler um, and as I'm stitching it, find out where my mistake is. So um, first of all, I stitched um, a few of these flowers and leaves and yes, they were all in the right place. So I know my counting was right here. Then I put my, um, I put this tree in, then I stitched my house and then I stitched this and then I stitched this line across. And I can tell you, that this border is absolutely perfect. It all lines up. So I stitched this down and all of this is lining up with this border. So I then came over last night and I stitched this down and this is all lining up with that. So it literally only leaves this section. There could be an error. And I've counted and I've counted and I've counted again last night. I still can't find it. So tonight I'm going to stitch across this little girl's name and her age and that runs from there to there and I'll be able to check all of these to make sure they're in the right place. So tonight I should find the error. I don't know where it is. It is, you know, really, really bugged me and puzzled me. Um, Obviously, I've got to go back in and I've got to fill lots of things in. But this is a very, very sweet sampler. Um, she's one of a pair of sisters and Robert Harris is stitching the um, accompanying sampler. Um, it's lovely to do things as teams. It makes it all the more fun. It really enriches it. Now, talking of um, stitching things as teams, um, Hands Across the Sea Samplers has got a lot of stitch-alongs coming up in um, a matter of days now, October the 1st. Um, Needleworkers from all around the world are going to start the stitch-along for Eliza Martha Linfoot. And that stitch-along is being led by um, Sherry on Facebook and there's a special group that you can belong to and share the experience. And, and Cherry is a wonderful Stitch Along leader. She does live videos every month. Um, and um, I'm sure that everybody who's taking part will um, sort of enrich their experience of stitching by um, sharing that with other needle workers. Um, the next Stitch Along we have is Esther um, Blackwood and I know that um, Janice in Canada is very very busy um, getting all the kits together she showed me a photograph of all the silks and um, oh, it's, it's wonderful seeing huge piles of silks all the colors <clears throat> and this sampler has some really really beautiful beautiful colors in it and the thread pack for this is going to be absolutely scrumptious. Um, I know that Janice is very much hoping to start shipping by the middle of October. And the stitch along for Esther is due to start on uh, what we call Boxing Day in the UK. Um, and I do realise that um, not all countries have Boxing Day. It's actually the 26th of December. Now, last weekend, um, we announced a very um, special uh, release, and that was the absolutely gorgeous Rose Ada Featherstone. Now, Rose is a limited edition booklet, and she will only ever be released this once, 
okay she will never be released again so it is a now or never uh, time for her booklet um, people have asked me why have we done that well rose is um, exclusive to um, hobby house needleworks and when we make a booklet exclusive to a store we are just printing that booklet for that store um, the print run for rose is 1500 booklets 1500 might sound a lot but it isn't you think of that spread around the world that is not a lot at all um, that number was set because if you're going to join a stitch along, the store has to be able to provide the materials for you to stitch that sampler. And it is a logistical nightmare kitting up um, large numbers of um, you know, kits. Um, and particularly now uh, in the time of so much disruption around the world with supply chains. Um, it is a logistical nightmare putting it all together. Um, so, you know, we had to decide a number with the store. And of course, if we print 1500, um, the store can't come back to us and say, well, could you print another 10 or could you print another 100? It, you know, it, it, in business, it just doesn't work that way. And in printing, um, you know, with costings and, and, you know, and how it all works. So that's why it's a limited edition. Um, and, um, you know, I think 1500 is a reasonable number for, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very big number for a store to have to kit up. But, you know, it's the most that we and the store can manage. Now, if you are um, joining, and lots and lots of people have bought the booklet, um, here is the booklet, and it's in our spiral band. Um, and it's a super little booklet. It comes with some history on Rose, and Rose's story is delightful. You know, she was she was obviously a girl that had a lot of um, bravado around about her to go to America and give false information on immigration. Um, our little spiral bands, because they're small booklets, it doesn't mean to say that the chart has been compromised. The chart is actually printed 10 squares to the inch, so it's a really good size, very, very kind on the arm. Um, as we talked about last week, Rose comes with a bonus thank you sampler of Jane Elizabeth Milner. Um, last week, I said that I wasn't sure how I was going to finish um, Rose, uh, sorry, Jane, but I decided to um, have her frame. So she's all ready to go to the framers on Tuesday. My frames are closed on Monday. So I always visit the framers on a Tuesday. So uh, she's there and she's ready. And I will show you the little sampler once she's framed. Um, framing samplers, it really finishes them off. I may restitch this with wool. The um, Walls are absolutely gorgeous for um, Jane. And I think maybe the walls may capture her a little bit better than the silks with the colours. Um, and then maybe I'll finish the wool one on a spool. I just thought that would look so nice on my little smalls wall. There's some beautiful, beautiful colours in that sampler. Really, really pretty colours. Um, so, um, with Rose, you need to grab this booklet whilst you can. I know with Anne Morrison, there have been many, many disappointed people. And we did actually print um, about 250 more of Anne than we have of Rose. But then it all comes down to providing the supplies for the sampler. Now, um, I have another sampler here. And um, I had hoped to sort of bring it up to the screen, but it's so big, I can't do that. Um, this sampler at the back is um, the Blue Ribbon Sampler by Alwyn Horwood. And um, this sampler brought me a lot of friendship. Um, this book for this sampler was um, a limited edition print. 
and um, it was so sought after and it was really, really expensive uh, to buy the booklet. I think at some stages it was sort of running at sort of like $350, $400. And I put a little post on Facebook. Was it Facebook or was it my blog? No, it was before Facebook. I put it on my blog uh, that I would really like to stitch this sampler and if anybody had a copy I could buy or borrow. And um, two people contacted me straight away. One of those was Krista Gramer of Just Stitching Along and the other one was Michelle Moulin-White from Mill on the Floss Samplers. And that is how Krista and Michelle and myself got together and that's where our friendship started all those years ago which I did put the date on the sampler was 2012 and you know the three of us have had this wonderful journey since first of all stitch alongs together and then dipping our toes into reproducing and sharing our reproductions with you but the blue ribbon sampler also brought me another friend um, the, um, there was a corrections list for the Blue Ribbon Sampler and I put out a request, did anybody have the corrections list? And guess who contacted me? It was Lisa Brown. And that's how my friendship started with Lisa. Now, I can never think of Lisa without Jaylee. Jaylee was the needleworker that stitched Elizabeth Uffendale and Anne and Elizabeth sister samplers. Lisa and Jaylee, their bond is st as strong as if they were sisters, if, if not stronger. Um, and another sampler brought Jaylee into my life via Lisa. But that's a story that I'm going to tell you in a few months' time. Um, needlework, it brings us all together. I constantly feel the love of my stitching sisters and brothers. Um, needlework has always been there at times of need, um, when I need the strength of a friendship um, and the, com you know, the companionship in lonely times. Um, Needlework has really enriched my life. Yesterday it enriched my life in as much as um, I joined um, a sampler guild in the States for an afternoon via Zoom and I had the most wonderful, wonderful time. Um, the one thing about Covid Although it sort of has restricted our world, it's also expanded our world. We're also used to talking via Zoom now. And this guild had a day uh, via Zoom. And what I realised was that there were needle workers um, from all over the place. Um, Paula from Luxembourg, she is a member of this guild in um, the States. Uh, another one of my friends who lives in a completely different state uh, to where the guild is, she is a member. And it was really, really lovely to spend that afternoon talking away, laughing away. Um, and I was so surprised how quickly the afternoon went. Um, so. The point I'm trying to get to as I waffle around is um, it doesn't matter where you are, you can join these sampler guilds and participate via Zoom. I strongly suspect that um, many um, get-togethers now, even when we can all physically be together, will also be done via um, Zoom, you know, digitally. Um, so if you are in England and you think, gosh, I'd really love to join a sampler guild in the States, or whether you are in, um, I don't know, think of a state middle. If you're in Florida and you want to join a sampler guild that's in Texas, you can do so um, because of the power of the internet and things like Zoom. 
I had a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, really sort of cheered me up and um, it was just so lovely meeting new people, seeing old friends and talking about samplers. Um, talking of friends, I had um, a really lovely gift come the week before last from a needle worker and I wanted to feature it in my video last weekend but my video went on for such a long time. Um, I opened a parcel to find this beautiful um, needlework pouch and it's such a lovely size. You know there's room in here for the hats booklets, for my hoop, for my linen, um, my threads lovely lovely size and it has this really really beautiful um, charm on the zipper and then when you open it up it has a really lovely lining really complements the um, the fabric which is so beautiful and then inside there was a smaller patch so that you could maybe keep your scissors packs of needles um, seam rippers, you know, the smaller things you don't want to get lost amongst your linen and threads. And then inside that, there was, this is so beautiful, a um, thread keep with one of our Bristols on. Um, I believe that's Harriet Salt. I need my glasses to look. So pretty. And then there was a card. Um, I'm not going to read all of it, but um, basically this, this lady um, who is an amazing needle worker, many of you will know her work on social media, um, she kitted up um, Jane Hopkins and she made um, a thread bag for her Jane Hopkins uh, project and she made me one too and that is just so so kind of her. Um, I'm going to use this um, on a forthcoming project because I like to match my um, projects um, with the um, accessories I use and this is going to be beautiful. Really really lovely. In fact, this matches some curtains I have. I love big, bold flowers, and so does Sandra. And um, we showed a sneak peek of Sandra's sampler that she has reproduced and charted this week. Isn't it beautiful? This is going to be the most magnificent of samplers. Um, this sampler, Sandra and I both have almost identical samplers that were stitched by two girls that we think were possibly first cousins. We haven't finished off our um, research on the girls. We like to do a little bit of research at the beginning, but we normally do most of our research um, as the sampler is progressing and towards the end it all gets slotted together. Um, we're very, very excited to release that sampler. Um, it will probably be next year. It's a big sampler to stitch and, and Sandra's going as fast as she can. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I also have this week, which was a really, really lovely surprise. Um, Laura and Brenda, Brenda and the Serial Starter, sent me some of their uh, thread drops. They're beautiful. Um, and on the back it says, Happy Stitching from Brenda and the Serial Starter. Um, really, really beautiful. I love all the, um, the little pretties that surround um, needlework. In the um, Get Together with the Sampler Guild yesterday, we were talking about um, visiting a store like the Attic. Could you imagine what those little girls would have felt when they walk, or if they walk through the doors of the attic and saw all the little pretties that Jean has there. The little girls, they would have loved all the, um, 
all the sort of um, the scissors and the needle minders and oh the project bags and everything they would just love it um, we are so so blessed to have so many of the things that surround our stitching um, we're all little girls really um, attracted to bright colors and sparkly things um, thank you Laura and Brenda um, I can't wait to see you girls and to give you a hug in person, but it's getting closer now the border's opening. Um, okay, I have gone on for far too long. Um, huge congratulations to Lisa. Um, Mary is a beautiful, beautiful sampler. And thank you to everybody for listening to me week after week. Um, and until next week, Stay well, stay safe. Buzzy bye.